here's the motor yanked out of the 300D at the shop. Um, after we yanked out the motor, there was a lot of other components that I didn't photograph that we took out, you know, the fuel lines, fuel tank, uh, exhaust system, etc., etc. After we pulled the motor, this is what the engine bay looked like. Uh, there was a whole bunch of crap that we no longer needed, uh, so we cleaned that up as well. So here's what the engine bay looked like after we got rid of all the AC hoses, the vacuum lines, the wiring harnesses, and all the coolant lines that were no longer necessary. After multiple rounds of degreaser and the pressure washer, we got the engine bay uh, all cleaned up to look like this. Here's a photo of the batteries in the original configuration uh, as they came out of the Chevy Volt. They're in a T pattern, they sit underneath the vehicle in what uh, ICE car would be a transmission tunnel and uh, underneath the back seat. Um, that's the long T at the bottom. Um, my challenge was making space for uh, these three batteries plus in another entire full pack of batteries uh, to fit somewhere inside the car. The batteries come mounted on these trays uh, with these hold down studs sticking up that you could see and uh, I thought it would be good to reuse the trays since that's the original mounting um, for the, the batteries in the Volt. Um, it was kind of nice because then I could sort of visually see uh, without having to maneuver the batteries the whole time how many I could fit. Um, and what configuration I could fit under the hood. So I decided to do a complete pack um, under the hood and you could see all three trays there, uh, the three different length size batteries. Um, and it worked out pretty good. There was just enough room um, to do it. Uh, and I decided the best way to enclose them and have them as sort of a unit would be to build an aluminum battery box uh, to encase them. So that left me with three more batteries, as you could see in this photo, uh, to mount somewhere. And the obvious position would be inside the trunk. Um, in the 300D, the original fuel tank sits behind the back seat and before the trunk, and it has a sort of separation panel between the trunk and the back seat. Um, and after removing the fuel tank, uh, pretty much about like one and three quarters of a width of these batteries could fit uh, where the fuel tank was. Um, so I originally thought maybe I would put all three batteries there and try and just reconfigure the trunk. Um, but that, and what actually ended up happening was I was able to uh, fit one of the batteries uh, in the transmission tunnel and that freed up room to, so I could have a regular size trunk. So for mounting the battery in the transmission tunnel, this is the smallest battery of the three in the pack, by the way. Um, I reused the original plate and I made some cross members uh, and welded um, some nuts to the frame that the cross members could bolt into um, that would hold the tray and the tray would hold the battery. Um, what was really nice about this configuration um, is that there it's pretty tight but there's a nice amount of room up top to still um, attach the high voltage wires to the battery as well as the uh, BMS wiring harness as well. Um, the coolant ports also came out in a very good position in the front and rear as well for routing so it really worked out well. I used the three trays that I cut up and the dimensions of the batteries uh, to draw up an aluminum battery box and I got the panels for it laser cut and sent to me, uh, tack them together and then test fit them um, in the vehicle. Uh, everything was very, very tight, uh, just fit uh, with really no tolerance. Um, had to do a little bit of hammering and a tiny bit of cutting away at uh, parts of the car to get it to sit nicely in there. In this next photo, you could see the battery trays bolted into the box. Uh, the battery trays are actually pretty thick, and so they provide a good rigidity and structure um, to, to the box itself uh, for holding all the weight of the batteries. Um, there's a number of mounting tabs um, all along the top. There's going to be a final cover that goes over the box in the end. On the front, there's a couple of little tabs, and that's actually to mount uh, the DC to DC converter. 
You can kind of see that the whole box is elevated off the ground and that's because on the underneath side uh, there's a bunch of aluminum angle uh, welded to the base. Um, this, when the box sits into the frame rail, uh, those angles sit flush up against the frame and then have bolts running through to securely hold the box to the car. In this photo you can see two of the three batteries mounted into the box to validate the test fit, make sure everything works out. Um, what you might not notice is the coolant fittings on either side of the batteries are pretty tight in there, so I wanted to make sure that I'd have room to get some coolant elbows to uh, fit onto those fittings. Finally, here's a shot of the finished box. It has a uh, port for a coolant fitting to go in. It has the master disconnect safety switch and also has uh, the, all the cable glands for the high voltage wires and the uh, BMS wiring to run through. Finally, uh, under the box, you can't see it in this uh, photo, but there are a bunch of mounting tabs um, having the box be pretty much flush with the top of the frame, left a bunch of space underneath to mount other components that I needed. As I mentioned before, the DC-DC converter mounts kind of uh, to the front of the box, um, but directly underneath I had welded some other aluminum supports that bolts could go through that um, actually mount the charging unit from the Chevy Volt and also uh, my main control box and high voltage contactor box. The Tesla motor has three mounting points on it. There's one in the front, one in the back, and one on the side. Here you could see the original differential in position in the 300D, uh, the two half shafts coming out either side. The subframe of the vehicle actually mounts to the front of the differential, and then the differential itself on the rear has a mount that goes up to a cross member up above. Um, the challenge was that the mounting points on the Tesla uh, would have to be mounted to the subframe, which meant that the subframe would actually have to be hard mounted to the body of the car somehow, since it, the differential was no longer there to provide that support. We wanted to get the motor up as high as possible in order to have enough ground clearance, and in order to do that we needed to remove that cross member that you saw in the last photo the differential was bolted to. Um, also, we had to cut out the rear sp uh, spare tire well um, in order to fit the mount and to have the motor in a position where the axles lined up. Uh, along with there not being any points for mounting the motor to the body of the vehicle, um, there's also going to be increased uh, stress on the rear end now because of the uh, torque of the motor being in the rear as opposed to having the differential. So we also needed to make some uh, structural enhancements uh, as well to handle that all that power. Here's a shot of the front uh, mounting point on the Tesla motor. Right above it is the subframe. You see we had to cut out a little section uh, to notch out to fit the very top of the motor housing. Um, above that you could see the two bolt holes. Um, those were the original bolt holes that bolted to the differential. Um, so that was kind of the support of the subframe. Um, so we actually had to um, make some new holes in the rear of the subframe and make some mounts to bolt it directly to the body. The most important part of lining up the motor was getting the wheel hubs of the Mercedes uh, to be a straight shot um, for the axles to go into the Tesla drive unit. In order to line this up perfectly, we used some uh, straight metal stock that we had in the shop that fit through the wheel hub um, so we could make sure it was directly in line with the drive unit. Since we needed some extra support in the back, um, we decided to use eighth inch angle to encapsulate the stock frame on either side of the spare tire well. Once that was all welded in place, we cut some two inch uh, square tubing, um, eighth inch wall, and uh, made a support frame, not only to handle the extra power, but also to have a mounting spot for the rear uh, mount on the Tesla motor. 
After the frame was finished, then we had to fabricate the motor mounts to actually attach the drive unit uh, to the new framing and other points on the car. This is a shot of the rear motor mount uh, mounted to that two inch uh, tubing stock. Here's a shot of the front motor mount. Um, it bolts to the spot where the subframe used to mount to the stock differential. Here's a shot of the side mount. Uh, the bracket comes up and actually bolts into the frame of the car. Uh, the frame was pretty thin, so we actually reinforced that section of the frame also with an eighth inch angle. Here's a shot of the mo motor uh, being test fit, fully bolted in all sides. Um, it's pretty parallel to the ground. Um, also the other direction, it's also parallel because you can't have the motor uh, tilted too far up or down. As you can see, there's pretty minimal ground clearance here, um, but we're going to add an adjustable suspension in the future so we could sort of uh, get the perfect balance of ride height and ground clearance. Here's another shot while the car is on the lift of the motor with the suspension at uh, full hang. Here's a shot of the charge port socket, built a bracket inside the trunk to support it. Here's the mounting points for the electric power steering pump and the electric vacuum pump. Here's a shot of the two radiators with cooling fans mounted for the two independent cooling systems. One is just for the motor and the other one is for the charger and the batteries. We were able to reuse the stock Chevy Volt coolant reservoir. It looks like one unit, but it's actually two completely separate chambers in one housing. I uh, mounted that next to the battery box. For episode three, mounting all the components. Uh, next time we're going to be back talking about more things uh, to prep the car for the components final mounting install and also probably talk about controls and wiring as well. Enjoy! Enjoy!